a very warm welcome to everyone welcome to global online university and here we are back with our NTA UGC net paper 1 preparation for 2022 batch that is the uh, se sessions which we have from Monday to Thursday live uh, 9 p.m. every day and we have started with the unit that is communication this our this is our third unit for the 2022 batch we have already completed teaching aptitude and research aptitude and in communication unit this is the third lecture so today we are going to see in detail barriers of eff to effective communication as well as mass media and society uh, part of it so before we go ahead uh, announcement regarding UGC NTA net paper one new batches which are going to start from uh, Jan 2022 so the lectures will be scheduled from 3rd of Jan that is 2022 now what will be the speciality and uh, benefits of these batches this the batches will be having 100 plus live lectures on each and every unit which is a part of your syllabus at the same time 100 plus video lectures covering all the topics uh, as per the syllabus you'll be having Sunday revision lectures which will be once in month for all the units and it will be a detailed revision lecture so it is not exactly that what has done only that part will be revised any topic which is left out or any topic needs you know attention even those topic will be conducted in Sunday revision lecture then you have notes on all the topics will be conducted you have practice for uh, for practice with all the solved previous year question papers so ideally from 2011 onwards till date whatever papers have completed will be practiced after this as in uh, i mean to say as in uh, mock test the revision will be conducted in the form of mock test or uh, comprising of the whole syllabus it is a replica of your actual paper which will be covering more than 2500 mcqs and the validity of the whole course will will be for one year i hope everything is very clear voice is also properly clear so fees for the same if it if you are enrolling till 31st of december it is 1499 and if it is from 1st of jan it is 2000 rupees uh, global online university app you can download you download you can select the category UGC net paper one with 2022 cycle and you can just go through the material also uh, details if you want anything which you personally want to know or you know need to get information whatsapp number is given you can get in touch with the whatsapp number for whatsapp batches also up to for 31st of December there uh, the price amount is triple nine whereas from 1st of Jan it will be uh, 1499 for details you can just get in touch with the given whatsapp number the app i mean this is a demo of an app the way it looks like wherein you can download it with the help of the google play store you can select the category of ugc net paper one that is 2022 cycle you can see certain free test videos uh, notes in the form of pdf and you can join the course this is these are the details which you can get in touch with the whatsapp number also or if anything else you can just get in touch with them so now if you see uh, we have uh, completed the whole topic of communication that is a subunit i'm talking from subunit point of view the first topic is properly cleared with uh, certain extra topics also effective communication we did yesterday classroom communication was left which i'll be taking from today and then we'll see barriers and mass media of society so ideally uh, the communication unit is not over there are more certain extra things which i need to cover uh, which will be conducted in tomorrow's lecture so tomorrow again we will be having communication uh, certain models will we have we will be taking certain theories we will uh, get into touch with and certain parts which are i feel you know that those are important uh, from the viewpoint of examination or previous year question papers that also will be taken tomorrow so let's start with uh, today's topic so now when we talk about classroom communication if you remember yesterday we did intel intercultural communication we have clearly understood the examples we have discussed in detail so now when we talk about classroom communication it is the communication which is is the sorry it is the this communication is the basis of social identity uh, for the students teaching social activity as it involves both teacher and student in order to learn which happens in a classroom direct communication allows immediate feedback which again completes the communication cycle so without feedback the communication cycle is you know it's not uh, valid or it is not complete 
then we uh, teachers inculcate proper values such as economic cultural and social values in the students with the help of classroom communication so basically if you see now this classroom communication 101% classroom communication questions comes in the form of statements or assertion reasons only and these classroom communication questions are always seen with teaching aptitude you know it, they are correlated with teaching aptitude so like for example if we talk about what type of communication should a teacher uh, you know focus in classroom or how the classroom communication should be a uh, classroom communication helps to come up with what type of personality of a student that is the overall development which we have seen why because your teacher inculcate the values of uh, economy uh, sorry economic social and cultural values which can form a better citizen uh, i mean to say which can help the child to develop into a better citizen so you you need to very carefully read the classroom communication questions because those questions are not direct they are always twist in the twisted form and they uh, they want you to think over not only from the student point of view but also from the teacher point of view because this this questions as i said they are always merged with teaching and you know uh, communication so from both the points you have to understand the question and come up with the correct appropriate answer which is very close to the question so which will be practicing our pra in our uh, practice mcqs as well as previous year question papers as well as mock test also now as i said teacher needs to use certain things in a classroom communication or how the classroom communication of the from the teacher point of view so here a classroom communication because there was a question on this words uh, in the previous year question paper so if you see classroom communication is always has to be empath it should be full of empathy it means that teacher should have the ability to understand and share the feelings of you know of one another that is teacher should try to understand the students feelings and what exactly they are uh, aiming for so that that's the reason the classroom communication from the teacher end it has to be empathetic now when i say sympathetic it is something which is a a feeling of you know helplessness so which should not be inculcated in students apathy that is lack of interest and enthusiasm or concern which is again towards negative aspect antipathy that is deep seated feeling of you know dislike a version that is dislike which is again odd man out so this was the there was a question based on then what type of communication teacher needs to uh, present in the classroom so it is always empathetic so that the teacher has the ability to understand uh, understand and share the feelings uh, with the students okay so which will help to create a bonding which will help the students to give confidence and you know teachers definitely teacher will teacher can encash this in order to develop a better citizen for among the students so this is Uh, important thing which you should know so you should know now what is sympathy what is apathy or what is antipathy uh, antipathy and what will be the right option given so the meaning if it is clear it will be easier for you to come to a right uh, selection of the answer now so barriers to communication now let's quickly have a look at barriers now again barriers again definitely on barriers also you definitely get one question see a uh, classroom communication one question comes if i if i go just a minute i'll just go to the syllabus i'll just clear this um, okay now see a uh, one question definitely on effective communication comes which focuses more on non verbal with the help of example in that the classroom communication they merge up with teaching aptitude so this this point is very important when i talk about communication uh, either in the types you know characteristics you do not get a direct question but in types uh, un characteristics some statement wise questions are uh, asked so here also you get a question of that sense barriers a direct question you get i mean to say from the topic barriers now the the two questions as i said that five questions of the communication topic and you know how the division goes three questions which you need to read the question properly you will be able to answer them but two questions which are difficult to crack they normally are from you know uh, media mass media and society that is little bit unpredictable what type of questions they are going to you know they are putting so that two questions little bit if you are unsure about but the three questions you know very well they e either they are from the communication sub topic effective communication sub topic or barriers so you should be able to capture this three questions very well two uh, we can't say i mean to say it is 50 50 okay now 
so let's understand this barriers to communication so what are the different barriers so when i'm talking about physical environmental barriers so it is like time place space climate noise choice of medium we have asked yesterday with the help of non uh, physical sorry non verbal aspects we know what they are called what are the terms in the match the following they can be seen so you should be very clear yesterday i told you to write and take down those points barriers caused by choice of medium that is a medium to pass on the message from one end to another now when i say one that is from the sender towards the receiver semantic barriers we have done level a if you remember yesterday we did four levels level a level b level c and level d so semantic it it includes in which level it is including level a where there is unclarity on the message with respect to the words and symbols which is caused by what a connotative meaning a meaning which is you know personal and cultural perspective connotative and denotative denotative meanings are those which are direct which are as per the dictionary meaning but connotative meaning as per the culture as per the personal aspects the meaning can change so there can be a semantic barrier cultural barriers which we saw yesterday that is diversity of culture so intercultural uh, communication if intercultural communication is not considered in a you know cultures are not understood the aspects the attributes or transition is not un understood very clearly even the interpretation they can result into what they can result into cultural barriers psychological uh, if you remember we have again then psychological it comes as one of the level so see now the level questions which are coming they are not out of your syllabus they are only an extension to your barriers so now normally instead of calling the barriers they can be divided into levels also so psychological uh, barriers or attitudinal barriers which are caused because of relationship attitudes and moods okay which uh, definitely can result into a negativity barriers which are caused by varying perception of reality it means lack of understanding or the level of understanding and comprehension when you comprehend the meaning of the message it is not exactly what is expected so again as i said in barriers of communication the variety of questions are coming either in the form of level or they will give you an examples they will tell you to find out you know which from the given examples which can be the barriers and which cannot be the bar which can't be the barriers so you have to be very careful suppose if it is a connotative uh, semantic barrier under connotative meaning if i yesterday i told you even if it is connotative meaning it has both the aspects now it has a positive aspect also and negative i'm indicating them with the help of symbols okay so now what is positive positive which helps you know towards the positive development progress growth so such from the sentence itself you will try to understand that it indicates the positive approach when i'm saying negative the feeling of hatred uh, feeling of jealousy feeling of uh, misrepresentation of the message so that gives you what a, a meaning towards you know the negative aspect of the communication so they will give you some type of you know they may give you positive uh, connotative sentence also and negative also expression wise or you know by using some examples so you should sort out they can come up with a question of negative and positive also in the form of semantic barriers so or they can just give you uh, try to find out semantic barriers so you know very well negative sentence can result into what negative sent negative sorry negative sentence will result into what it result into the uh, i mean to say it results into something called as what the barriers so you should be uh, very well prepared for this examples it can be in any form there will be no direct question on barriers please remember barriers i mean i haven't seen any direct questions except one or two cycles so you should be very very clear with this all pointers okay now uh, apart from that now yes in certain in certain uh, papers there are some there were some words which were you know related to communication so com important concepts so what are those concepts that i'll just clear it out now surveillance something which implies collecting monitoring processing interpreting and retaining uh, the information it is an important feature of mass communication so when we are talking about mass communication surveillance it means that 
the messages okay uh, like like for example suppose if you are referring certain youtube videos now and even the youtube videos when they are uploaded there is you know there is a clause of any unwanted material part of a video where you have to tick an option the video goes for a scanning so it means that scanning is actually called as surveillance where the video is monitored the video video is you know processed in order to see the appropriateness of the content so that is one of the term which is used in communication uh, then semiotics that is nothing but it semantic it is it is a branch of linguistic which studies how signs are interpreted in different languages it is a study of how meanings are assigned to the sign that is sign language it deals with both that is connotative and denotative so connotative it means which has a personal and cultural meaning and denotative which has you know uh, appropriate meaning so like for example certain signs they are with an appropriate meaning but you can you know perspective wise the meaning can differ so that is uh, used over here i hope it is very clear you should be able to recall all these things as i said i am keeping uh, reminding you very well that uh, communication topic is very easy the syllabus looks very short sweet but the questions which i have seen they are not that easy i mean say earlier paper in old papers they were little bit but now the difficulty level is seen in every cycle so you should be prepared for this very well okay now when i when i talk about uh, yes uh, when i talk about these two words yeah coming pradeep coming to your meaning also so when i talk about these two words they are just you know picked up from the previous year question papers that is language okay Pradi uh, linguistic it means it is something which is related to language okay so these words i mean th that's the reason i said language because based on languages you can see certain questions in your previous year uh, question papers old question papers so somewhere these words are used uh, in order to give you you know a uh, little bit twist to your question so that you get confused and you do some mistake or you end up with a mistake that should not happen so this word should words should be very clear with the meaning okay now coming next to is mass communication uh, so for uh, see as of now today what i'm going to do we are going to start mass communication uh and in mass communication uh, we are going to speak more about uh, tel uh, educational uh, television so there are some additional points which i feel whatever i read today that much i have taken uh, with the part of in the today's lecture anything which i'm still reading and which i find you know valuable for that i'll keep on adding so don't worry even if it is missed i will add it in the revision lecture so let's start with mass communication now ashwini to do the classes of communication this week we are going to do communication only we have just started it from monday so today is just a third lecture so let's understand now what is an objective of mass communication so basically uh, yes to know what is the meaning of mass communication to uh, understand what are the elements involved to understand the importance of mass communication with different features uh, basically it is it is captured it has five aspects okay now what are those five aspects that is large audiences uh, fairly undifferentiated audience composition some form of messages which are in the form of reproduction uh, dis, uh, rapid distribution and delivery of the messages and low cost to the consumers so, so consumers do not have to specifically pay for you know such type of messages or in order to get such type of messages characteristics they are relatively large heterogeneous and anonymous audience for the anonymous audiences they are transmitted publicly no privacy they are you know on social media you can get this mass messages e easily they have a short duration for immediate consumption so any like for example if i'm talking about an advertisement because advertisement is a part of uh, mass communication that they also if you remember we have seen this so advertisement if you see has a few seconds of existence the reason is that obviously they require the huge costing for that but then that few seconds you have to create an impact in the mind of your consumers okay so it is was just a short duration which is in, with a impactful message then feedback is indirect non existence or even delayed cost per exposure per individual is minimum that is from the consumers aspect but not from an organization aspect source belongs to the organization or institutions whichever they want to uh, with the help of which they want to spread the message and it is mostly one way so you can say that um, 
this type of messages please remember here i mean to say here there were a lot of questions with ref, uh, with respect to what you know the feedback okay that is uh, the feedback is less or it is mostly absent okay it is not there is no direct way of taking the feedback immediately okay so this is how we can tell uh, we can use the word or we can talk about what we can talk about uh, aspects which are you know covered in mass communication heterogeneous yes show up heterogeneous something you know uh, which which is uh, consistent which is uniform okay so that is called as uh, i mean to say uh, there are two words heterogeneous and homogeneous okay so homogeneous which is some exactly same heterogeneous it means it has uh, so, uh, sorry i have uh, i mean to say i have just a little bit uh, confused it Het homogeneous and heterogeneous there are two words so het homogeneous is something which is same and heterogeneous it means something which is diversified which is bit different okay there are differences with aspects like for example differences in the background differences in the ideas differences in the perspectives so that's the reason we call it as heterogeneous so i mean to say what you want to good give it with the help of mass communication uh, the audiences will take it depending upon what depending upon their a uh, pers perception which can be in the form of heterogeneous okay fine so yes now let's uh yes not same people yeah gautam thank you so i think i just did a little bit uh heterogeneous and homogeneous both i did but while explaining heterogeneous i some i use that word same okay so now yes uh, functions of mass media now here again you can get an example of um, example in the form of question that is entertainment social uh, socialization political awareness cultural transmission uh, catalyst that is importance to the development or progress so this you can get in the form of examples where you have to you know uh, get into uh, differentiation of examples between uh, or examples which will help you to uh, give uh, examples which will help you to recognize the mass communication so that is one thing which you have to keep in mind now today uh, yes so now from here this slide onwards i mean to say i have just prepared some material on educational television that is a me medium of communication via educational television where a lot of important points i have noted some important notes are there so just keep your books handy in case if you are making some running or handy notes so whichever point you feel you can write you can take them and then you can uh, start revising in your revision lectures okay so what we will do is that i'll just come to this two slides later i'll come at the end because in between i have added the content for them so that i can use in the form of revision okay so yes let's first start with an educational television so the in the indian beginning television i mean to say the first uh, time when it came to india in the form of doordarshan was on september 15 that is 1959 so in old question papers previous year question papers you used to see the educational television okay year wise so this was a very common question now in this last two three cycles it is not but this was in 2019 it was there but uh, not in this this cycle okay so yes it was known as the national television network of india the first telecast which was started on 15th of september 1959 in delhi after a gap of 13 years the second television station was established in bombay that is in the year 1972 so these are important uh, years which you have to note it down and by 1975 five more television stations started so initially 5591 station that is new delhi after the gap of 13 years in 1972 that is the second one started and then we had you know in 75 we had five more television stations in shrinagar amritsar kolkata kolkata madras and lucknow okay so this i see i don't know, now i can't i mean to say you do not know which cycle what type of deep questions have been asked but as a part of your syllabus let's let's go through it very well okay so now for many years okay the transmission was mainly in black and white and then the television industry got a boost in 18s 80s that is when doordarshan was introduced you know as a color uh, form of medium that is uh, during the year 1982 
with the help of what with the help of ancient game so uh, that is in case if you are getting the question on this so you should be able to crack tho that also okay so that is what uh, it's written over here now um, when we talk about uh, just a second okay when we talk about the next point this four points i hope it is very important and you have taken it very uh, very uh, carefully that when it began okay when it uh, basically started which station it started with uh, which station developed later and now i mean to say which station were added with the with the year so that all you have to take in uh, consideration black and white turning into color tv and what now uh, yes now this particular part that is the second phase of growth okay for television which was witnessed in early 19s okay with the foreign channels like cnn uh, star tv domestic channels like z sun tv which started to broadcast with the help of satellite signal now this is important in the uh, i mean to say change this change the scenario and the people got an opportunity to watch regional national and international programs now this numbers you don't have to remember but just as we are going with the television history so i thought i'll just put it down starting with 41 sets in 1962 and one channel that is audience research unit at present tv in india at present tv in india covers more than 17 million homes giving a viewing population more than 400 million individuals uh, more than i mean to say 100 channels so this may not be a part of your examination just for your information i have put it down okay now easy accessibility of relevant technology variety of programs and increased hour of transmission are the main reasons for the rapid expansion of television system in india so i um, this can be one of the statement that is what promoted you know the rapid expansion that is technology one uh, variety of uh, programs and definitely the transmission hours okay these were the main reasons for the rapid transmission of television in india so basically when we talk about uh, the educational television which started with uh, what started in the year 1959 which took a leap uh, after the gap of 15 years sorry after the gap of 13 years in 1972 then 1975 bringing you know five stations and then there are rapid change so technology a uh, variety of programs and transmission were the more important components or elements which got you know a rapid expansion in television okay in india then coming to mo major educational pro projects via television in india so which are this projects now the reason to bring this projects some or in other previous year question papers one or other questions were there on this so that's the reason whatever i have you know with the help of previous year question papers i have listed all this major educational programs or projects here in the list one or two are missing which i will add it because you know i didn't get time to read so i couldn't prepare notes on that so that i'll add it in the coming lecture so let's start with one by one secondary school a television project which was in the year 1961 basically you have to remember the aim what was the aim so the project was designed for the school secondary school students of delhi now what is the main important point over here the aim with the aim to improve the standard of teaching in view of shortage of laboratory space equipment dearth of qualified teachers in delhi this project was started on an experimental basis in the year 1961 for teaching a few subjects that is physics chemistry english hindi for students of class 11 the lectures were syllabus based and were telecasted in school hours and was a part and parcel of school activities so now this was one of the educational project which was done with an aim to bring or to improve the standardization in teaching irrespective of shortage of resources and this was one of the successful project okay so when we talk about secondary school television project so how do you need to remember okay when we talk about secondary school television project it is basically the one to improve the standard of teaching irrespective of shortage of resources and it started with with as an experiment basis but it it ran it ran very well and it started with few subjects that is physics chemistry hindi uh, english and hindi and it was a part of the school activity okay so that we this is the first project which was started now next one is the delhi agricultural television and project krishi darshan 
Now this particular project was initiated on 26th of Jan 1966 for communicating educational television in India with agricultural information. So Krishi Darshan it is nothing but basically focusing on agriculture information to whom to the farmers again on an experimental basis where 80 villages were selected. Okay. Now experiment was successful and there was a substantial gain in the information regarding to agricultural practices which was you know uh, which was even supported by IGNU okay so please remember that you know this the IGNU had a great support but that time they didn't had their own projects okay so now the second project which was Delhi agriculture television Krishi Darshan which was basically to boost agricultural knowledge okay and again it was an experimental basis but the experiment went very well Next we moved on to that is site we in old question papers there are full forms on this are been asked. So satellite instructional television experiment which started in the year 1975. Now this project was one of the largest techno social experiments in human communication and was commissioned for the villagers and the primary school going children uh, which selected 2330 villages in six states of India. So basically for this project, six states of India were shortlisted. Now, it started in the year 1975, that is on 1st of August. The six states were Rajasthan, Karnataka, Orissa, Bihar, Andhra Pradesh and Madhya Pradesh. These were the six states which were shortlisted for the said project. Now, what was the main objective of this project? So basically the main objective of this project or experiment to study the process of existing rural communication so see I am not saying that the question will come only on the uh, acronym and the full form. So basically it was what because side questions are seen in your previous your question papers. So now remember one thing it was with an intention uh, to check the rural communication how what exactly is the you know progress or improvement going on. The role of television as a new medium of education. And the process of change brought by the community television in order to, you know, give developmental education programs, not only in the field of agriculture, but also in the field or in the, uh, uh, sorry, subjects of health, family planning and social education. And the school programs, which was, you know, for a 20, I mean to say 25, 22 and a half minute duration, which was telecasted in the regional languages for the age group of 5 to 12 years okay to realize or to make the students realize the importance of science in the in their day-to-day -day life so if you get any any mass the following questions you should be able to ensure that it is related to what so if i'm if i'm talking about sight okay now you may not i mean say it is lit, little bit uh, uh, difficult to tell that whether you will get about the six st uh, states or experiment on which uh, which states but definitely one question which you can get is what what is an intention so intention was basically not only to improve the agriculture knowledge along with the other subjects such as health family planning and social education but also to realize or to uh, make the students uh, from the age group of 5 to 12 uh, to understand the importance of science in the day-to-day -day life that is somewhere if you if you realize it what they are trying to tell us that they they try to focus on you know innovations and the form of research so that they wanted them to realize that innovation plays creativity dynamism research plays an important role and that has to be taken very seriously so the experiment showed that the new technology made it possible uh, for the television you know to reach the number of people even in the remote uh, areas at the same time it was appreciated and as was accepted in rural schools as you know educational force so this you should be very careful uh, remembering that what type of question because this topic is seen but now definitely the flavor of questions will differ so what all things you have to keep in mind i'm not telling you to again write it hold the thing only thing is project started where what was the intention to start the project and what was the benefit out of it okay i hope it is clear any doubts or anything you can put in the chat box chat box is open yes good evening to all those who have joined late and hello to everyone now let's see now post site now see this program started in the year 1975 and it was a huge success. Now after this, I mean to say after the huge success of SITE, there was a program that is post-SITE project. 
now this project was you know for the target uh, sorry this project has targeted uh, the villages of rajasthan with an intention that uh the site project was initiated in march 1977 when a terrestrial transmitter was commissioned at jaipur now what was the reason for the or what was the objective of this post site the post site was to familiarize the rural masses the improved and scientific technology about farming the use of fertilizers and the maintenance of health and hygiene so the post site i mean to say out of six villages which was shortlisted for site in 1975 one among them was rajasthan but rajasthan in rajasthan a post a, ty, a post uh, in i mean the project was conducted only to focus more on scientific improvement uh, in farming for use of fertilizers maintenance of health and hygiene apart from bringing national and emotional integration which was a need at that time and making students or sorry making children aware the importance of education health and healthy environment so this was you know uh, basically to touch very minute area this post site project was started in uh, rajasthan okay now going ahead is indian national satellite project that is insat which you started in the year 1982 So now let's understand what this project was with an intention. So the primary aim of this project. Now again in mass the following you can get you know you can get insight, site, post site. You can get this questions and you need to match it with a proper uh, objective. So insight was with an intention to make rural masses aware of latest development in agricultural productivity, health and hygiene. Okay. So it also focused on you know it it also focused on the Uh, more importance on agriculture but with ref reference to the uh, latest technological upgradation it also targeted the villagers and school going children uh, in the in the in the place of orissa andhra pradesh bihar gujarat maharashtra uttar pradesh by june 83 so what was the difference between um, hygiene it means cleanliness so if hygiene it's something called as cleanliness to stay clean healthy like that it is okay so that is called as the word that is the meaning of the word hygiene so when we talk about uh, the difference between site post site and insat insat has you know included many states i mean the site was focusing on six states so insat started including many states in order to spread the knowledge about this important uh, aspects okay with uh, agriculture health and hygiene okay then going next to yes uh, higher education television program so we are when we are talking about a television educational television so even you know higher education has implemented a project which was in the year 1984 now what was this project let's see basically you know so university students were beneficiary of this project that means it was in the higher education field the project that is this particular project in this particular project ugc in collaboration with insat that is indian Sat national satellite project okay in collaboration with them they started educational television project popularly known as country wide classroom so this is very important just make a note of it uh with an aim to update upgrade and enrich the quality of education while extending their reach now see here what was the basic focus in higher education was to ensure that the quality is not compromised while expansion many times it happens but here it was very strict on this particular aim that the quality should not be compromised you know while expanding or extending their expansion so here under this program a one hour program in english on a variety of subjects was presented with an objective for general enrichment of undergraduates educated public and teachers as well so like you know like you know to add um uh, knowledge i mean to say to add to their knowledge a uh, specific maybe the current contemporary topics were taken and those topics were you know discussed just for a general enrichment and you an inter university consortium now this we have done very well that is the association for uh, educational commission that is cc along with a chain of about 20 audio visual ma mass media communication research center was set up by ugc in at different institutions in the country 
in order to have or to a certain high quality of programming for this projects now beside producing programs at the center some programs were imported from the foreign countries or different countries in order to you know uh, come in order to suit the requirements of indian students so you can also say that you know international collaboration was done but only after seeing the capacity of the indian students so that they can you know match up the level of indian students and the pro project definitely became very popular not only among the students teachers but other learners also so this was country wide classroom the project uh, the educational project which was taken or which was initiated by higher education uh, television program under the guidance or un with the help of ugc in collaboration to insat so this also you should be uh, very well able to remember okay because here if you see ugc played an important role uh, consortium of educational communication communication played an important role so this this can be a part of your questions then yes then started ignu that is you know 1991 uh, ignu started durdarshan that is telecasting the program for distance learner which basically started from may 1991 initially it was telecasted on selected days that is alternate days monday wednesday friday 6:30 to 7 am uh, then with an aim you know to provide tele counseling to the students of uh, open universities in remote areas so this was basically to reach the remote areas owing to the encouraging response from the viewers the frequency of the project was increased to 5 days a week and this program become very became very popular so ignu entered its journey or started its journey with this durdarshan telecast which was basically uh, started as an counseling session and after the great response then it started with its channel now what was that as we all are aware that is gyan darshan educational channel with the help of ministry of human resource development information and broadcasting prasar bharti ignu launched gyan darshan on 26th of jan 2000 as an exclusive educational television channel in india now obviously on gyan darshan there were a lot of questions in previous year so you should remember because this topic has always been in in a life okay so you should know it about it very well so ignu was the given ignu was the was given the responsibility as a nodal agency that is a mediator for linking and transmitting the uh, program it started uh, out with two hour daily transmission channel for the students uh, this duration was increased in the same year immediately in the next month to 9 year, 9 hours so it started with two hours the popularity became um, very much it was in demand immediately in the next month it started with 9 hours and then the time slot transmission was further increased to 16 hours in after in the span of 6 months and then uh, within a span of year it became a 24 by 7 you know non stop daily 24 by 7 transmission channel for educational program so the journey of gyan darshan now this again is an area which is not even touched by ugc net so you should remember that when gyan darshan as an educational channel was started it was not 24 by 7 immediately it was only in a span of a years time it it became because of its popularity it became a non stop daily 24 by 7 transmission channel for educational program initially it was only 2 hours then it came to 9 hours then it came to 16 hours uh, growing up to 19 hours and then it came to 24 hours so you should in case if it's a minute question comes with hours you should be able to know that is 2 then we have 9 then we have 16 19 and 24 okay but yes in the span of one year it all happened in the span of one year so this is gyan darshan now we also have gyan dhara and gyan vani so gyan darshan and gyan vani questions were very common gyan dhara questions were not there so gyan dhara also you should remember uh, all in the year 2000 so gyan dhara is an internet audio counseling service Uh, which is offered again by ignu students can listen to the live discussion which is conducted by the teachers and expert on the topic of uh, of the day so every day have they have a different topic on which you know the discussion is conducted uh, and interact with them through telephone email and also on the chat mode so the chat mode is on so that the students can put in their queries and the queries can be sorted out by the experts or by the teachers who are conducting the session 
when the live sessions are not on okay so when this gyan dhara as i said it is a live session so when this live session does not is is not on gyan vani delhi is made available on this platform so the platform is utilized by gyan vani now what is gyan vani it is nothing but an educational fm radio station which works in several cities in india so gyan dhara is basically uh, streaming is available for internet users anywhere in the world but uh, you can also see the important events which are broadcasted by gyan vani are also related to gyan stations okay using gyan dhara feed that is the slot has been filled up uh, shohib this topic is not uh, i mean to say in higher education they are not in detail they are basically the part of communication but uh, uh, gyan darshan i mean to say this uh, topic of uh, these are the educational television programs which comes under communication there can be some questions ict in ict part they can be asked they can touch this topic but basically this comes under communication unit okay under educational television it comes under all those topics is it clear now yes i i have left two slides in between because you know that was an just of a uh, repetition of this so when we talk about as i said i have covered gyan vani which was an educational uh, as i said it is an educational fm radio which works in several cities of india which was la launched in march 2000 now we have vash channel also okay vash channel is the one which is uh, which is a channel of consortium of educational communication under the ugc and we just now we studied that gyan darshan of durdarshan are also having same such efforts gyan vani is an educational uh, radio channel which uh, which is a channel of indira gandhi national open university so vash channel is dedicated to the students studying their degree courses in universities and uh, colleges so now you should be very clear okay let me first complete this vash is an higher education channel which is telecasted by a uh, consortium of educational communication ugc on swayam prabha dth okay through free dish channel which was again launched in 2004 26 of jan 2004 so now when the channels are given to you whether it is gyan dhara whether it is gyan darshan when the whether it is gyan vani whether it is vach channel okay so this all you should be very clear because uh, lakshmi coming to your just just reading your message i'll come to you because yes these channels are sorry these channels have a part of the questions and communication in your paper so now do we need to concentrate on this topic along with communication yes you need to concentrate because in every cycle one or other channels through the medium of channels they have been keeping asking you the questions okay so when we do i mean to say see i do, this this there are questions on this in the previous year question papers so when i take previous year question papers that time you know we will see the connection but you have to do this topic at least the basic things you have to cover okay eklavya channel is also there that is eklavya technological channel it's a distance learning joint initiative between iits and ignu which was inaugurated in 2003 with an objective to bring the audience to the actual iit virtual classrooms at their doorstep so you know making virtually uh, things possible for those students so now you can get the channels and you can get objectives so you should know very well whether it is vash channel whether it is eklavya channel whether it is gyan darshan whether it is gyan vani or whether it is gyan dhara okay apart from the educational projects which we did either it is krishi darshan or it is site or it is post site or it is insat so you should be able to clarify each at least objectives and their years you should do this lakshmi for your communication topic it is questions are there 101 person questions are seen in the previous year question papers okay so this you should be able to remember very well i know that you know uh, that's the reason i said before i started the topic i said you carry uh, you keep your notes pad ready handy so that you should know you can write all the channel at one place and you should be able to remember them very well okay so in case if you have not done in fact so when you do your revision i have told you you are supposed to do revision of this uh, topic also so when you do revision you should be able to ensure that you are uh, you know covering all these topics in your revision if you have missed so when you are doing revision and at that time you will again sit either with the help of videos or your books if you are referring any books in the books if it's not there 
please read it from here but you have you have to prepare this very well okay so yes so this is what we had for the day today we have completed mass media and society properly some topics one or two topics i have read but i couldn't include uh, because my notes were not ready so i will include that don't worry tomorrow if i am taking models and tomorrow if i get time i will include that part also so uh, tomorrow's lecture i mean so say i can little bit extend if i am not able to complete also but tomorrow i'll complete this communication topic properly now uh, tomorrow if i am not wrong it is 30th okay uh, then 3 days i'll be not taking the lecture on this channel from 3rd jan okay uh show up you can contact uh, uh, regarding what you want to contact me you can put the message on the channel or you can contact the given whatsapp number uh, i meant to say we are in connection so the given whatsapp number at the start any of the whatsapp number you can contact okay no doubt their doubts will be clarified fine uh, yes uh, i was uh, announcing one important thing uh, from 3rd of jan we will be having our fresh batch okay now uh, you people will be in delhi mana what this fresh batch will be so now the fresh topic will be started no doubt okay so any student who has missed uh, the previous lectures like for example see the videos are available in the description channel the link, link is also available but don't worry in case if you are enrolling our in our course so your topics which are left out that will be completed in the coming cycle that is we will be having a proper cycle for new new batches so so don't worry everything will be taken care of okay and yes apart from ugc net we also conduct courses for gujarat set west bengal set k set and ap set with full mock test pdf solution with answers notes uh, 2500 plus mcqs video lectures are uh, uh, right now the package price is 999 in case if you are if you want you can go with uh, this shohib if you want to contact with a proper whatsapp number i'll give you which i have showed you at the start you can just note it down this number so in case if you have any any difficulty you can just contact on this number that is 8143109153 you can contact on this number and get your doubt uh, get your doubt clarified okay so yes thank you everyone so let's um, year is going to end but your your practice or your aim is not ending so unless and until you clear your uh, net for you the year is same so that's what you have to remember and start preparing for the upcoming cycle very well time is there make good utilization of your time and opportunity so that you know with very proudly you can crack your net examination in the coming cycle okay that's all for the day thank you everyone good night and see you tomorrow sharp at 9 pm with our next uh, topic of communication thank you everyone